Now let us take a look at what are anonymous arrays in Java. Anonymous arrays are arrays that uh, doesn't have a name. We don't have a name for these arrays. And uh, we use these arrays in situations wherein we have to use an array just once in our program. Maybe we can use it for such purposes. We'll understand this with an example. Let's go to Eclipse and let's code it. Uh, this is an example for anonymous arrays. So what I'm going to do in this example is I create an anonymous array, pass it to a method, and that method will display all the elements in that anonymous array. Uh, let me tell you the syntax for, for the anonymous array. It is you have to give the new operator, say the data type, square brackets, and then you can give the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so whatever it is. So we will be using this syntax for creating an anonymous array. You can see we have not given any name for our arrays here. That is the main difference. And uh, we can create any kind of uh, arrays like this. We can create an array of floats, double string, or character, whatever it is, by just giving new character. It's an array. And then we can just give the characters here, A, comma, B, comma. C. So it's an anonymous array of characters now. So you can just go and create any kind of anonymous arrays. We'll use this array and we'll pass it to a display method. First, let me code the display method. It's a public static void display and it's receiving an array of integers, let's say m. And uh, as usual, I'll use this enhance uh, for loop to print all the elements within the array. That is uh, sysout. We'll give this sysout statement and then we'll print k. So this is what we have seen in our previous program too. That's simple to understand. Now let me call this method display and then pass an anonymous array. This is how I pass it. New int and then I give the elements. So 2, 3, 4, 5. That's it. So now what it does is it creates this array and it passes it. Now from within this method, we are going to display the output. So what should be the output? It should be 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let me save this. Let me run this program. So 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's how you can pass an anonymous array to a method. So since you don't have a name for this, you cannot use it anywhere else. If you don't have a name, you cannot call it anywhere else. You can very well use it for situations like this. Okay, the next concept we can look at is, can we return anonymous arrays from methods? Can I return this array from within this method? Very well, I can do that. Let me show you how to return anonymous arrays from methods. For that, what we have to do is, so we'll first create this method, uh, public static. I'm going to return an array, so I'll say it's an integer array I'm returning. And uh, I'll give a return array and what we are going to return is uh, return this anonymous array. That is return new int and then let me pass the array 2, 3, 4, 5. So what we are doing here is we are returning an anonymous array. So how will you, so how will you capture this uh, array that is getting returned? We will create an array here. And then we'll call this method return array. So whatever array that is getting created here and returned will be captured in M. And we can very well use our enhanced for loop as usual. In K in M, we'll print all the elements here. So we we'll say, yeah. So we are printing all the elements that is being returned. Let me go and quickly run this code. What should be the output? It should be just 2, 3, 4, and 5. So an anonymous array is getting returned and printed to the user. Is that clear for all of you? Very simple examples, but it will be very useful when you're going in for your projects. Say the foundations are very important in any programming language. If you know the basics very well, you can go and build any large complex projects. If the basics are not good enough, Working in larger projects will be very, very tough. So please understand the basics very well.